Anfield, Sunday afternoon, Liverpool 7, Man United none. Daniel Story was watching. Daniel, you've described it as one of the strangest games you've ever been to. Why? And what did your match report look like at half time? Uh, thankfully, I was doing the score during the first half, so I hadn't didn't have to delete 600 words at, at after about 65 minutes or maybe it was even 55 minutes. Um, yeah, it was. It was incredibly strange because um, we've seen big team lose to big team heavily before, you know, Man United to, to Man City and Arsenal to Man United, the 8-2 spring to mind. But I don't think in either of those, the team that lost um, lost their heads so spectacularly as United did in the second half yesterday. Um, it was... It was laughable and it was genuinely funny watching kind of watching Bruno try and manufacture a foul and then cry a little bit. And then Luke Shaw steam out of defence one way while Lissandro Martinez runs in a completely opposite direction to try and kick someone else. And Liverpool players just sort of point at the gap and run into it. It was bizarre. I think it's it's vaguely reassuring in that I say this quite a bit on this show, but whenever you see the impact of coaching making a difference I'm always reassured that maybe it's not just about who's got the best players because that what yesterday was is a team that had, had clearly ignored all instructions in the second half and as soon as they let that first goal in after the break they just did what they wanted they just roamed around like toddlers in a playground it was just it was embarrassing and yet and every team you play whether it's Liverpool or you know Everton or Nottingham Forest or Preston North End will make you look silly if you would just run around like children and have no structure at all. It was it was like a control experiment for a team versus individuals, basically. Mm. You, you take it more as a, a Man United falling apart than a, a, a Liverpool restored to former greatness. Tom, what what did they say about this in in France? Um, I mean, we, we didn't have a huge amount of time to discuss the, the game, sadly, because our live coverage uh, immediately ran into the uh, evening programme, uh, Canal Football Club, uh, which is more of a magazine type show. So we had to try and condense our thoughts into about three minutes post game. I was on with Samir Nasri uh, and Christophe Lollichon, the former Chelsea goalkeeping coach. Um, and yeah, it was a case of, of, sort of trying to make sense of what we just witnessed in the space of about two or three minutes. Uh, a lot of the kind of very perplexed noises and then end of the show. Um, but I mean, I, I was I was thinking about this game in sort of the wider Premier League context. And I'm not sure I've ever seen a more remarkable scoreline in Premier League history. Well, we've seen big results before. We've seen teams be annihilated. Daniel mentioned, you know, Arsenal losing 8-2 at, at, at Man United. But, you know, there was a time when Arsenal would get thrashed every now and again by one of their big rivals. That was never all that surprising. We've seen United be thrashed by Liverpool in recent years. You know, they shipped nine goals against them last season and, and didn't score any goals in reply. But this was supposed to be a new Man United, mm. a resurgent Man United, you know, with the Carabao Cup in their in their pockets after last weekend. And looking back to pre-match, I, I, I can't remember the last time Manchester United as, as a team, but also, you know, Man United fans, ex-Man United players... I can't remember the last time they turned up at Anfield in such confident mood. I mean, there was that clip that did did the rounds before kickoff of Graham Sooner saying that he was he felt quite confident about well, the way Liverpool were going. I, I think he and, was answering Roy Rio. Keane, I think he was answering yeah. Rio Ferdinand, who'd said that he'd never been that confident about United's chances. Yeah, and Roy Keane and Gary Neville kind of like la laughing, um, and you know it, it was a great reminder of of, of what a remarkable sport uh, football yeah. is, and also I think. Uh, for me, you look at what happened in that second half, I, I think a team that is less sure of itself responds in a different way to the way that United responded. I think the way United responded was we are, you know, uh, we are uh, having a, a good season. We are a good team again. We have, uh, we know what we're doing. And so we're, we're not going to, we're not going to take this line down. We're going to hit back. We're going to keep attacking. And in a way, it reminded me a bit of the 6-1 uh, defeat against Man City that, that, that Daniel mentioned in that United's problem in that game was that they kept on attacking and City picked them off on the counter-attack. And it was a similar kind of thing uh, at Anfield yesterday. United didn't respond to a team who were at risk of falling to a historic shellacking. They responded like a team who still thought that they were capable of somehow taking charge of the game um, and ended up, you know, having their 
having their bottom spanked uh, in, in, in a way that I don't think we've ever seen happen mm. to a Man United team in the Premier League era. As much as we thought that Man United had turned various corners, etc., under Ten Hag, and maybe this exposes the veneer of professionalism that he'd put on top of the chipboard squad, etc. But Liverpool, Tim, we didn't think that this team would gel like this. Yeah, they, they, they found themselves again. It was it was the Liverpool we remember. The rock and roll sort of football was back. Um, the biggest compliment I can pay them is that they kept my dad awake because he uh, he normally has an afternoon nap around that time. But he was he was absolutely enthralled. Um, I also felt sorry for Liverpool that they only had uh, three minutes of stoppage time at the end in which to score more goals. I, I, honestly, I'm so I'm so annoyed by that. I, I feel like it's it's a bit of a disgrace, really. right? That you would normally add on a minute per goal, and they scored six, six in the second and there half. Were, there were ten subs in that second half, right? So, at what point do, do, does the fourth official and the referee decide that this game is over, and mm. we can just give them a couple of minutes? Is it, is it like three nil, four nil, five nil? They just give them a token three minutes. You know, Liverpool earned the right to to humiliate United um, even further. I was also kind of wondering how we describe this. It's more than a rout. Um, Tom said shellacking there. Mm. Uh, he also used the word spanked, which which I think is quite good. Mm. Um, I mean, it 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 is a, it's a beating, it's 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 a it's a thrashing. But m- m- maybe there's no word that's adequate enough to describe it. But it was. Um, yeah, I mean, also- part of the problem is we used up a lot of the humiliation words, you know, all the kind of heavy defeat words when United got thrashed twice by Liverpool last or season. Or when yeah. Liverpool yeah. lost to Real Madrid the other day yeah, as well. Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, which was another reason why. I guess a lot of Man United fans were so confident about their chances in this big game. Uh, until the 43rd minute, a lot of observers had them as possibly the better side. And then Cody Gakpo with that wonderful finish opens the scoring. But then you have half time and surely United are going to turn this around. But then, Daniel, then what happens? Well, I think I think it was down to it's, it just shows the power of of confidence because it seemed like that one pass from Andrew Roberts in the first half which kind of made Fred spin up sort of 720 degrees and not know where the ball was and then Gakpo's ability to just I mean, he made Rafael Varane look very ordinary Varane just looked like he was sort of almost slipping and sliding the wrong way and Gakpo just dances inside and finishes it it, it almost as if Anfield was sort of awoken by that because they were nervy when Bruno Fernandes and when Rashford missed a chance they were getting on the referee's back there was a kind of kind of rumble as if to say we're worried what might happen today and that goal seemed to just sort of awaken everything and and it awoke Liverpool's players we've been talking all season about the the kind of limpness in midfield and yet it's amazing that when you've got a, a strong defensive line and you've got a forward line that's suddenly seeming to click and kind of dance and dip into different spaces, it's amazing how much better your midfield can look when every time they pass the ball forward, someone does something special. Um, it was a it was a brilliant... I thought Salah was the best player and he's come in for a, a lot of criticism this season, understandably after the new contract and the kind of dip thereafter. But the way he kind of... What they seem to do is is to target Dallow in the first half and in the first 60 minutes by having kind of Nunes and Gakpo almost doubling up on him on the left. And Salah just had the rest of the, the pitch or the rest of that, the width of the pitch. And he was magnificent. He 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 tore Shaw apart. He, he I mean, that that move on Lissandro Martinez when he kind of list, Jedi mind tricked him to the floor was just sensational. And Cody back, Gakpo looks... Like a finisher, all of a sudden, because he he had a bit of Nunesitis in that he was having a lot of shots, but not necessarily finishing them. But those finishes were remarkable. Mm. Uh, Nunes, who himself got a brace in this game, and Roberto Firmino with the seventh in the week in which he revealed he will be leaving this summer. At what point did United break Tom Williams? Um, that is a good question. Um, just looking at the timings of the goal, but 40, obviously they went in at half time 1 0 down. Was it the third from Cody Gakpo? Nunez makes it 2 0 in the 47th minute. Gakpo makes it 3 0 in the 50th minute. And that was, yeah, that was after the um, Salah did his little did his little number on Martina. So maybe it was at some point between the third goal and the fourth goal. Although there were 16 minutes of respite between Gakpo's <laughs> second and Salah's first. So, you know, perhaps they hadn't completely lost the run of themselves. But just to go, go back to Liverpool a bit, I, I felt that Liverpool, right from the start of the game, looked a lot more recognisable. I thought first 20, 25 minutes, you saw things from Liverpool that you hadn't seen um, that much this season. I thought Fabinho in particular, who has, has for me, 
kind of embodied uh, Liverpool's struggles this season. He's looked an absolute shadow of himself for most of the campaign. But last, but you know, yesterday we saw him stepping forward, you know, making interceptions in you know high up the pitch. He was involved in I think Salah's first goal. He wins the ball back high up the pitch. But even in the, in the first half, you saw you saw signs of that. You saw both of the fullbacks getting involved. I thought Andy Robertson was was fantastic. Um, obviously, you know, plays a key role in in the opener for Gakpo. But you know, you, you saw you saw signs of that even before um, Liverpool got the first goal. And I think it was a sign that you know an awful lot of what has happened with Liverpool this season has been. You know, I've said this before on the pod, but I think a lot of it has been sort of emotional, psychological. You know, partly physical as well. After after the the many highs of last season, there has been this kind of crash. And I think what what yesterday showed was that if you sort of if you motivate these players in the right way, and obviously the fact that they're now basically full strength. You look at the starting eleven yesterday, and okay, maybe you put Thiago in, maybe you put Luis Diaz in, but apart from that, that's that's pretty much the first choice eleven, and. You get everyone firing, and Liverpool are still capable of of doing what you know what we've been used to seeing them do in recent seasons. And you know, obviously, they they, they go into that second leg against Real Madrid very much mm. uh, unfavoured to turn things around. But I th- you know, I think the fact that they they scored so many goals and, and attacked with with such with such clinical precision will we'll give them that little bit of belief because if there is you know a, a team in the whole of Europe who are capable of, of, of pulling off it's Real Madrid. Uh, improbable European comebacks it is well either Real Madrid or, or Liverpool indeed so alright well uh, Daniel you mentioned in the score the danger of drawing conclusions for Liverpool or Man United from uh, such a freakish a fixture as this but this but it's inevitable that we wonder what this means for their prospects Wednesday week in the Champions League or even for the top four race where they're now just three points Liverpool behind Spurs with a game in hand. A quick uh, couple of numbers for you. Uh, Mo Salah has now scored in his last six games against Man United, 11 goals in those matches. He is, of course, now Liverpool's all-time Premier League goal scorer, overtaking Robbie Fowler, 129 goals in 205 appearances. My favourite stat comes from, of course, Duncan Alexander, who points out that Liverpool have played 25 games in the Premier League this season. More than a third of all the goals they've scored have come in two matches, just two of them. Bournemouth and Man United. Uh, there's also um, uh, Andy Robertson with his... with. I mean, there's more than an assist for that first goal because he actually points to Gakpo and tell, tells him where to run before he plays the pass. Um, so he's now overtaken Mesut Ozil uh, with the most with with more assists in the Premier League. The king of the assists, has really, been Andy Robertson, dethroned by oh, a Scottish left back. Magnificent. Hey, look, here's Paul Newman asking. Oh, sorry, Danny. I was just uh, Paul Newman writing in, and many thanks to everyone who did uh, uh, send in questions. But uh, Paul Mar- uh, Paul Newman asking, can Liverpool beat Real Madrid on the back of that performance? Uh, Tom, as as you were. Uh, uh, positing. Uh, Bruno Longinus, though, replying, Liverpool played on the counter-attack Sunday afternoon, which they can't do at the Bernabeu with that deficit. Yeah, I mean, I don't think yeah, I don't think they're going to go in through the Champions League. And that's kind of why I, I wrote in, in my match piece and in the score about kind of we don't sometimes we don't have to like project this onto another game because mm. that, that almost off, offers a negative connotation on, well, they won't be able to play like this in other games. It's like you've literally just beaten Man United 7 0. Like that is that's good. You're allowed to dwell on that for a little bit. Mm. The, the the maddest one of the maddest bits of the game is having watched Liverpool beat Man United 7 0 was the celebrations in the seventh goal where the pitch invader runs from one side of Anfield to the other, slips. And kind of two-footed tackles, but one foot on each ankle of Andy Robertson and Curtis Jones, both of whom were then hobbling down the touchline. And Jurgen Klopp, understandably, because he'd run down the touchline to kind of sort of not get involved in the celebrations, but be near them. And he was obviously near this bloke as he got walked past. And he he was screaming at this at this guy for you like I mean obviously it's stupid to do anyway but then when you slip and if he's injured two players in that move which you know they were both hobbling for the last two minutes of the game that would be absolutely astounding um it just kind of summed up a mad day for me like we're all looking at each other in the past what sort of thinking did did the support just injure two players in one move yes that did happen as well it was it was wild and 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 the the kind of even the commentary added to that because you had neville and carragher neville told carragher to do one at one point Mm. (laughs) i just thought is is the the fan zone back on sky like it was just and they were taking selfies they were cackling it's absolutely bizarre the Totally Football Show podcast is available three times a week bringing you all the football news you could reasonably be expected to care about we've got views we've got stats we've got analysis we've got some of the best football writers around 
and the whole thing is absolutely free. So have a listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or all the usual places by clicking on the link below.